What up, y'all? It's your boy, Home Team Man. I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Y'all already know what it is. Comment, subscribe, do your thing. But let's remember, keep it home, team, y'all. Today, I want to talk about King Taharka. Now, remember in my last videos, I talked about the 25th Dynasty and how these Nubian kings would pretty much go up into Egypt and try to culturally restore um, the region and pretty much have a renaissance of cultural restoration and a golden age within Egypt. Now these kings, King Pai and King Shabaka, pretty much set the stage for what I want to talk about today, which is King Taharka. Now King Taharka basically got an advantage from you know King Pai and King Shabaka who, who set the foundation for pretty much a golden age within Egypt and Nubia because King Taharka is most renowned for his monument building and his restoration of pyramids and, and temples. So King Taharka was well known for his 10 years of peace when he came to the throne and for restoring Egypt and Nubia at the same time culturally and religiously. King Taharka says that you know he came to the throne because his cousin Shibiku passed away. And this is what Tarka had to say. He said, yo, I received the crown in Memphis after the falcon went back to heaven. Now, Memphis, as you see, I have my map back here of Africa. Memphis is pretty much in northern Egypt today. Now, back then, Memphis was, was pretty much in lower Egypt because in ancient times, lower Egypt was northern Egypt and upper Egypt was southern Egypt and Kush or Nubia it had many different names in ancient times Kush and Nubia was pretty much in modern day Sudan this region right here so basically he says that you know I, I got the crown in Memphis and then my cousin Shabiku the Falcon went back into heaven so that goes to show the religious and, and cultural references that these Nubians had and Kind of, you know, the mindset that these Nubians had. Um, Taharka then started to, you know, expand in the region of the Levant region. Now, the Levant region is pretty much in Israel, um, Jordan, and Syria today. So, pretty much Taharka, he had this influence in not only Egypt, but the Middle East as well. So, it just goes to show that, you know, these Nubian kings really had a lot of influence and they indeed had uh, a dominant impact in Egypt and the Middle East. So one of the reasons why I like King Taharqa so much was because this dude was like 20, or 20 years old when he became like really popular. So that means even before he was 20, he was going on military exploits in the Levant region and Egypt. And he was doing commercial trade and stuff like that. So he had a lot of influence by the age of like 18. Or, and at the age of 20... He advanced himself even more because this guy is mentioned in the Christian Bible in this historic battle against the Assyrian kings. In this story, King Hezekiah of Israel wanted some help because he knew the king of Assyria was coming down there to try and dominate and conquer Israel. So Hezekiah, King Hezekiah asked Taharka, he was like, yo, I really need your help because I know you're famous in the Levant region and I know you have, you know, some experience with these Assyrians, so yo, please help me out. So King Taharqa was like, alright, I'm gonna help you out. So he goes up into Israel and he actually defeats these Assyrians and defends Israel. And the Assyrians are forced to go back to Assyria. And so Taharqa pretty much saved Jerusalem. And in the Bible, he's actually praised as being the savior of Jerusalem. A lot of people realize that this was a pivotal moment. And not only the history of the Hebrew people, but the history of the world. Because Christianity is basically, its birthplace is in Jerusalem. Now, not many people are going to tell you that some black dude <laughs> from Africa saved the land of the Christians, Jerusalem. Now, after some time, King, Shaharka, King, King Taharqa came into contact with um, the Assyrian king. His name was Ashardan. Now, Ashardan knew of Taharqa's impact and influence in the Levant region. And he was pretty much upset about that. So he was just like, yo, in order for me to get control of this area, 
I need to go down to Egypt and conquer it, or even Nubia itself. So Ashardin gathers his troops, he goes down to Egypt, and he's successful. And he kicks Taharqa back, back down into Nubia. Now, over some time, you know, the Egyptians themselves, they were just like, yo, you know, we would rather be dominated by the Nubians or, you know, under the influence of Nubians than these Assyrians. And that just goes to show the cultural and ethnic connection Egypt had with Nubia. So basically, these Egyptian like princes and kings would come together and they would, you know, have revolts and stuff like that. And they wouldn't recognize the Assyrians as their lords, but they looked to Taharqa for help. And so Taharqa, he came out of Nubia and he went back into um, Upper Egypt and to Thebes. And remember I said Upper Egypt is pretty much Southern Egypt today. So King Taharqa came from down here all the way up here into Thebes. And he had a victory in Thebes. And so the Egyptians in the Delta region, they heard about this. And it was just like, the Delta's right here today in Northern Egypt or lower Egypt. So these, these Egyptians in the Delta heard about King Taharqa's success in you know, Upper Egypt. So they was just like, yo, we can, we can really do this. We can really get back you know, our influence or whatever. So the, these Egyptian princes, they revolted and King Taharqa didn't come up to help. So it really didn't come to anything. So after some time, the Syrian king, his son, Ashardan, um, a Chardon's son, I mean, he pretty much tried to get control of Thebes and Taharqa tried to get control of Lower Egypt or the Delta region. And so there was a, you know, it's kind of a seesaw battle of, of influence and power. But pretty much these areas stayed the same. So Northern Egypt was under the influence of the Assyrians and Southern Egypt or Upper Egypt was under the influence of Taharqa and the Nubians. And so this Greek historian named Strabo talks about Taharqa and in his peak, according to Strabo, he says that Taharqa even advanced up into Europe and even into the Pillars of Hercules, which is in modern day Spain. And so of course, a lot of scholars discredit this and really, we don't really know if Taharqa had any influence in, in Europe at all but it just goes to show how popular Taharqa was in those times he's mentioned in the Bible he's mentioned by the Greeks and of course the Nubians themselves and so Taharqa over some time you know while he's in Thebes he writes this supplication or this prayer to his God Amun and he's saying he's basically saying yo God you know please help me out like we need this influence back in Egypt so these Assyrians won't come and dominate this area or dominate us. And that just goes to show the connection again between Nubia and Egypt, the cultural connection that they, that they had and even a religious connection that they had. So Taharqa had this, this prayer to a moon and archaeologists found it. And in a way, in a way Taharqa's prayer was answered because his nephew Tantanami, after Taharqa died in Thebes, which was Upper Egypt, his nephew came and he pretty much revived the Nubian um, Empire in the 25th dynasty and just revived their dominance and started restoring temples and, and things of that nature. So that just goes to show the influence that Taharqa had and how powerful and how popular he was in that region. He was a bad dude, one of my personal favorites. But apparently he was so famous that, you know, Will Smith, he even wants to make a movie about him. You guys need to check it out. It's called The Last Pharaoh. Now, of course, you know, Hollywood doing their thing. Taharqa was not the last pharaoh of Egypt. Even, even Nubia, he wasn't the last pharaoh. So that just goes to show, you know, how Hollywood kind of switched stuff up. But, you know, let's hope it turns out right. It's called The Last Pharaoh. You guys need to check it out. But, yo, I'm out of time, guys. And, you know, y'all already know what's up. Know that stuff. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Uh, yeah. Check me out, y'all. Uh -huh. Nasty watts in your area yeah. About to cause mass hysteria I like that on song, baby Check it yeah. Yo. 
things que tu do to me Usually me donne envie de rock to the beat So tu suis without a doubt t'es ma source de vie Apple tree puis j'ai le goût de snatch tous tes fruits True buddy.